What's up? This is Kenny I from Eagle Eye Shooting. I think it's about time that I uh, kind of dust off my old 30-06 and uh, see how this thing performs with some cast loads and some precision long-range shooting. So I'm going to start off by pretty much changing out the scope. Um, that's just a little random NC star that I had thrown on there a while back and um, after shooting it a few times it actually broke the scope itself. So <clears throat> I ordered another CV Life. It's a 6x24. Um, that's what I have in my AR as well. Kind of going with the same motto of um, cheap shooting. So uh, I ordered this on and I'm going to show you guys a little trick of how to actually uh, um, level out your scope without using like wedges and like special gauges and stuff uh, from like Wheeler or whatever. Uh, these are probably tools you already have at your house. So um, this is kind of a little trick that I found and it seems to work pretty good. So let me show you what I do to actually uh, level out the scope. Be right back. So you can use this um, little trait for almost every single gun out there. Um, for an AR-15 platform it makes it really easy. Uh, especially having that Picatinny rail and this is the reasoning for having uh, to take out the bubble leveler off your level itself. Uh, you can either put it mounted on your Picatinny rail and level out your rifle and um, or if for instance on a rifle like this bolt action I'm just going to use the scope mount itself. Um, these scope mounts are actually pretty square and I checked that uh, earlier with a micrometer so uh, they're pretty square. I'm just going to lay the bubble level on top. Now the goal is to pretty much level out your rifle left to right. Uh, it doesn't matter your elevation up or down. Um, like I said, we're, we're adjusting the scope to uh, have correct canting. So, I don't know if you can see it here. The level, it needs to go just a little bit to the right. So after leveling your rifle, I'll show you what's next. So at this point, you're ready to kind of mount your scope on top of your rings loosely uh, to get ready to set for eye relief. Um, but before that, if you're doing this on a professional scope, such as a Leopold or Night Force, uh, one of the tools that I recommend getting is a honing tool. And what that will do, that will, uh, that will pretty much uh, smooth out the surface and line up your rings so that your um, clamping surface is 100% around the um, scope body itself that there's no uneven pressure um, that's being applied on the uh, scope body. But for this instance, uh, this being a cheap scope and cheap rifle, um, I'm just going to go with it. So at this point, um, like I said, you're going to mount your scope loosely in there. I don't even have the top rings. And we're going to set the eye relief on there. Now that you got your eye relief set, uh, you're going to go ahead and go to your adjacent wall and go ahead and mark out your laser line. After you got your laser line marked out, you're going to carefully, without bumping the rifle, um, you're going to adjust the reticle and line up your uh, horizontal axis on your reticle. So let me give you a close-up on the uh, reticle itself. And you can see there that the horizontal axis is in line with the laser level on my adjacent wall. What you're going to want to do is now place your caps on top and start tight, tightening them down in a cross um, pattern. And this is so the uh, reticle doesn't cant left to right. So now we got the scope mounted onto the Mossberg 30-06. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do some testing with it. Um, I bought some factory Winchester Super X 180 grain um, power point and I got it for two reasons and one of them is to set the zero on the scope and then two would be to collect the brass for reloading. 
Now, I had about nine um, cases of 30 out six laying around, and they're shot from old armor piercing rounds that had the military crimp, which, by the way, are really badass rounds. Those things are capable of going through uh, half inch mild steel, and uh, man, I'm pretty impressed with uh, how fast they're shooting. Uh, they are actually non corrosive, from what I've um, read, also. But uh, other than that, like I said, I loaded up some rounds for the cast. Uh, 30-06, and I'm using a pistol powder, HP-38. Now, I want to put a link in the description below of an article that I read. Um, and he pretty much was, he's a fanatic of 30-06s and gave some pretty good detail of how to reduce load uh, to 30-06 uh, using pistol powders. So, I'm using HP-38, which is equivalent to Winchester 231, and I started out with 8.5 grains, and I'm going to work up to 11.5. Uh, I got three rounds per group, and um, we're going to see how these do. But first, when I get out to the range, we're going to go ahead and shoot these factory rounds, set the zero, and we'll see what kind of um, accuracy this, uh, this old rifle uh, is putting out. Um, I, I only shot this thing maybe 200 times, so <laughs> um, within those 200 times, like I said, I, I broke the old uh, the original uh, scope on there. But uh, let's see what these do. Let's get out to the range. Um, Hopefully we can get some good cast loads. Uh, which, by the way, if you use pistol powder, it seems to burn all the way. Just, there's not going to be any unburned granules. Uh, and you're also able to get to a subsonic level if you're looking for like a subsonic bunny fart 30-06 for varmint hunting or whatever. But uh, yeah, let's go out to the range. Let's get set up. Let's do some testing. Be right back. All right, folks. So we're back at the range, and I'm all set up. I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna do is zero out this rifle. Um, I'm going to shoot some of the factory uh, 30-06 Winchester uh, 180 grains and after that um, I'm going to go and test out these uh, cast loads I made. Um, after we get a, uh, you know, see if these cast loads work good, um, I got an IPSET target, IPSC target uh, that I have set up downrange and I'm going to see about going back a little further um, and see how well this thing does at 300 yards, um, possibly 400. So uh, other than that, uh, let's zero out this rifle and uh, see how well this thing performs. All right, so I got the lead sled locked down. Um, I'm aiming at that pumpkin that someone left out here. Uh, <laughs> so this thing is uh, locked down pretty tight. Hopefully I don't get scoped. <laughs> uh, I, I don't have a bipod yet, so I got one on the way. But uh, here's the first shot, 180 grain factory round. See how off this thing is. Oh, actually, right next to it, huh? Let's see about dial in right. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, got one MOA right. Let's see if I can hit it. Seems to be about where it needs to be. Put another one on target. <laughs> cool. All right, let me aim at the uh, uh, the uh, paper targets up there and see where these things are grouping. All right, so now that I got the uh point of aim where well, I know where the point of aim is and point of impact um, I could risk not damaging my chronograph now so I got it set up um, we're gonna go ahead and take three shots on target and see where these land uh, get a uh, FPS and SD number so let me go ahead and zoom in all right let's take three shots I'm gonna be at the second target to the left Okay, two, six, two, two. First shot. Two, six, thirty four. Bad grouping. Two, six, twenty seven. 
Yeah, these things are, uh, factory rounds are performing pretty bad in this gun. But so far, standard deviation of 6.03 with a uh, spread of 12. So, not bad. Let's go ahead and uh, start trying out these cast loads. All right, first up, I got the uh, cast round of Winchester 231, aka HP 38, 8.5 grains. I'm going to go ahead and fire three shots of this and see where it lands. Okay, here's the first shot. Be the third target to the left. First shot. Really, really different on power. So, uh, 1,235. And it looks like it landed below the target. Let's see if I can even get on paper here. Name top of the target. Okay. So I aim top of the target. Let me just hold that same point of aim. That one was 12, 1,230. Third shot. No group, but got a standard deviation of 20 and a uh, like a spread of 38. Let's go on to another one. Let's go with uh, next up was going to be 10 and a half grains. First shot, this will be uh, fourth target to the uh, left, from the left. Okay, 1,340. Second shot. Okay. 1,330. Third shot. <clears throat> 1,332. Wow. Standard deviation of 5.29 with a uh, spread of 10. And I got two shots next to each other. Still pretty low on the numbers, on the uh, speed. But let's continue on. Let's go with 11 grains now. I'm going to aim second to last target uh, from the right. Thirteen thirty-two. These things are shooting better than the uh, factory rounds. Cool. Third shot of eleven greens. Wow. All right, got a group there. Okay, last up is 11.5 grains. 1431. 1419. 1424. Cool. All right, standard deviation is 6.03 with a spread of 12. Really interesting results. As you can see, Pistol powder is working. It's uh, burning efficiently. And I got some low numbers there. Um, we got a better group, even though we're only, we're shooting about a thousand FPS slower than factory rounds. I got a better group compared to the factory. So uh, let me go ahead, take you guys up there and let's go look at these groups. All right, so we're uh, at the target and I believe these were the first factory rounds. That I shot, you can see that's a horrible groove for factory round. Um, almost five inches there. And after that, um, these are the first cast loads, and I knew they were shooting low. 
There's one down here, one here, one here. About the same as the factory rounds, but those 8.5 grains at um, just under 1200 FPS or right around 1200 FPS. This is uh, 10 and a half grains. And you can see that um, those are pretty acceptable for, uh, it's kind of a practice round. Um, let's see, yeah, about, about two inches right there. And then I got 11 grains, which gave us the best performance. That's almost MOA, a um, little over an inch. And then 11 and a half, open back up. So, uh, like I said, the pistol powder seemed to burn pretty efficient. Um, this is my you know, first initial testing. And so far, I'm getting uh, okay results. I think we're on the right track. But um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead. And now that i got some brass, I'm going to go back and um, reload a little more. Um, but first, we're going to go ahead and uh, do some long-range shooting on this IPSC target. See if <laughs> those factory rounds, even though they're performing horrible, See how close I could get. All right, guys, be right back. All right, so I'm set up at 312 yards. Um, some other people showed up here, so I'm gonna have to cut my range time short uh, and uh, see if I could attempt these shots with the factory rounds. Here we go. Side hit. All right, so uh, we know this rifle is capable of doing some precision shooting, and now that I got some brass, I'm gonna go ahead and order some Sierra Match Kings and 168 grain and the uh, 208 grain. Let's see what I can do. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but we're uh, blue dot is us up here. And when I was down there at the target, I pinpointed it and it's showing 311.78 um, yards. And I dialed up um, 3.25 MOA, and it seems to be dead on target. I have to hold right a little bit. Um, I think that's something to do with the, uh, uh, this is the factory ammo itself. So I'm gonna keep it zeroed out the way it is. Um, and I'll meet you guys back at the reloading bench. We'll start talking about uh, what's next. All right, guys, I'll see you back at the reloading bench. All right, so uh, we're back at the reloading bench, and it looks like this scope itself is holding up to the recoil of the 30-06. Uh, I had to cut my range time short again. Um, man, these uh, random people just don't seem to have any gun safety in mind. Might need to start finding a new, a new spot to shoot. Luckily, I got uh, three others in mind. But other than that, I had a good range day, and we found out with the initial testing of these cast uh, 153 grain from NOE uh, mold on the 30 6 seem to perform pretty good so far using uh, HP 38 so I pulled some targets and did some measurements uh, this is 11 grains of the HP 38 and you can see there that they're shooting at a 1.184 inch group standard deviations in the single digits 6 is a 0 0.03 extreme spread of 12 and average of 1424 FPS so uh, it is a lot lower than what I wanted but I think we're in the right track uh, here's an other target that I pulled and this is 11 or 10.5 grains of HP 38 um, that's just under a two inch group center deviations in a single digits again 5.29 extreme spread of 10 
and uh, these were firing at uh, 1334. Damn. So I'm kind of disimpressed with the factory rounds of the Winchester 180 grain power points. I would think that these would, things would shoot pretty good. Um, I mean, these are about uh, 75 cents a round, I think a dollar a round. But uh, this is the target that I shot three, uh, three rounds out of. And you can see there, 4.45 inch group. Ah, that's pretty bad. Uh, but they're shooting at 2,627 FPS, and the standard deviation is still in the single digits, 6.03 with a stream spread of 12. Um, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, like I said, I'm just shooting this mostly to zero my rifle and to get some uh, fireform brass. Um, like I said, I got some Sierra Match Kings on the way, and in the near future, I'm going to be reloading this for some. Uh, tighter groups and hopefully take this rifle out to a thousand yards. I also do have a bipod showing up on the um, pretty soon. Uh, I'm going to probably uh, mount it on where that swivel stud is. There's an adapter you get and um, go from there. Other than that guys, I really appreciate you uh, joining my channel. Um, I got more, uh, more in the future uh, with this uh, rifle uh, doing some cast shooting and some precision long range shooting. I uh, really appreciate you joining. Uh, let me know if there's any suggestions. Comment below. Uh, like, subscribe. And I'd like to do a shout out to uh, a friend of mine named Willie the Bullet Man. Uh, if you guys haven't seen this channel, um, he's got a lot of good information also. Uh, we've been keeping contact and he's a really good guy, man. Uh, a lot of good information. He was a uh, competition shooter back in the day and uh, um, prime military experience also. He's got a lot of good information to share. So, Willie, uh, thank you very much for keeping contact, and uh, thanks, thanks a lot for the thermocoupler you sent me. Um, my lead cast pod is working a lot better. Other than that, guys, I'll catch you in the next video. I appreciate you dropping by. Uh, see you in the next one. Thanks.